So, in part A of this question, we're asked to write 5 cos x minus 2 sin x in the form k cosine of x plus a. So I think the first step would be to expand the right hand side of this identity using the addition formula. So cosine of x plus a will have a cos cos sine sine pattern and the addition will change to a subtraction. So we'll have cos x cos a minus sine x sine a. Now the whole of that expression cos x plus a is getting multiplied by k so each of these terms will be multiplied by k. So we want this left-hand side to be identical to the right-hand side. So let's look at, first of all, the terms, the two terms with cos x in it. Now, what's multiplying cos x is this 5. And over on the right, what's multiplying this cos x is k times cos a. So these two coefficients of cos x must be identical. We're, we're equating these two coefficients. Let's do the same sort of thing for sine of x. Now you'll notice that both sine x terms on the left and the right have a negative in front of them. So we'll just ignore that negative. They, they're identical. So it's this 2 that's multiplying sine x that'll be identical to the k times sine a that's multiplying sine x over here. Again, these two coefficients, this time of sine x, must be identical. So the number 5 and the number k cos a must be equal. So k cos a must be 5 and the number 2 must be same as the number k sine a. So there we have simultaneous equations to solve and so first of all let's find the angle a by dividing the second equation by the first one. We know that sine a over cos a is tan a. So k sine a over k cos a will be equal to 2 over 5. k's cancel sine over cos is tan. So tan a is equal to 2 fifths or 4 tenths, 0 0.4. And we'll notice that a could be anywhere from 0 to 2 pi. And normally the tangent, we would say, is positive in the first quadrant and also the third quadrant. But notice in the third quadrant the sine and cosine are both negative. But here we have in these equations the fact that sine a is a positive number. Remember k is positive. We're told that. So positive times positive giving us positive. Positive times positive giving us positive. Both sine and k are positive. That doesn't happen in the third quadrant. That only happens in the first quadrant. So we've definitely got A being in the first quadrant. So that limits us to one value for A. And we are in radians, so what angle has a tangent that's 0 0.4? What angle has a tangent at 0 0.4. Now in your calculator you've probably got a tan to the minus 1 or second function tan to do this, but do make sure you're in radian mode. And there we go, it's 0 0.380 and so on. So that's us established the angle in radians. Let's work out what this number k is. And we'll do that 
by squaring this term, squaring this term and adding. Now we're heading towards the sine squared plus cos squared being one formula. So this squared plus this squared must be the same as two squared plus five squared. And that's four plus 25. That's 29. So you notice here, k squared is common factor. That comes outside and we're left with a sine squared a plus cos squared a, which is just one. So we've got k squared times one. So this means that k squared is 29. And therefore k will be the positive square root of 29. We are told that k is greater than zero. So finally, just to double check that we know what we've discovered, 5 cos x minus 2 sin x is equal to the square root of 29 times the cosine of x plus this angle 0 0.380 and so on. So that's us completed part A. Let's now move on to part B. There's the answer that we got from part 1. Part B shows us the graphs of two functions. So the first graph, y equals 10 plus 5 cos x minus 2 sin x, this sinusoidal curve here. The second graph, this straight line y equals 12. And we're asked a question about the points of intersection P and Q to find their X coordinates. So to find points of intersection of two graphs like this, we would set the two equations equal to each other. So we'll solve the two equations simultaneously. We'll set them equal to each other. So there's the two equations of the graphs and we'll set 10 plus 5 cos x minus 2 sin x equal to 12. And that'll ensure that we find the points of intersections of the two graphs. So let's take 10 from both sides. That'll leave us 2 on the right hand side. This 10 will disappear. And notice the 5 cos x minus 2 sin x we've already discovered we can write it as root 29 times the cosine of this angle x plus 0 0.380 and so on. And then dividing both sides by root 29, the cosine of this angle will be equal to 2 over root 29. So let's find out what 2 over root 29 is. 2 divided by the square root of 29. It comes to three, 0 0.371 and so on. So we've now got a trig equation to solve. The cosine of an angle is a positive number, 0 0.371. And remember the cosine is positive in the first and the fourth quadrants. So we'll find a first quadrant angle and then fourth quadrant angle will be 2 pi, remember we're in radians, 2 pi minus the first quadrant angle. So if the first quadrant angle was theta, uh, all the way around here would be 2 pi minus theta. So there's the two angles that we're going to, to find. So we'll find the first quadrant angle so x plus 0 0.380 and so on, that's the angle whose cosine is 0 0.371. So let's find the angle whose cosine is this 0 0.371. So the angle whose cosine is this number will be this, 1.19 and so on. Or two pi 
minus that number. So there's your first quadrant angle, there's your fourth quadrant angle. Now it's not this angle we're after, we're after x. So we'll need to subtract 0 0.380 and so on from both sides of this, this equation. So we take away 0 0.380, etc., 0 0.380, etc., from the 1.19. So that's minus 0 0.380. And also, we have to take 0 0.380 away from this number. A lot of calculation that we're just leaving to the end of the, the question. So we do have to calculate these now. So 1.19, there it is minus, and let me move, there it is, the 0 0.380 and so on. So these two have, to, on your own calculator, you could put these numbers in its memory or just write them down with a good few decimal places and then round at the end. So there's the first value of x, it's 0 0.8 0, 9, 7, and so on. Then the second one we'll get by taking 2 times pi, 2 times pi, we want to subtract 1.19, that's this number here, and also subtract, let's move up, the 0 0.380 number. Let's see what that comes to. four point seven one two three and so on so x is approximately zero point eight one let's take it to two decimal places for the point P and X is approximately 4.71, and again that's to two decimal places, and that's for the point Q. And that looks reasonable. This is 0 0.81, and this is 4. 7 1.